In the previous video, you saw how to write sub procedures with parameters. Using sub procedures rather than writing one big program can make your application easier to maintain, that is, easier to upgrade if you want to improve it, or easier to fix when something goes wrong. Sub procedures also mean that you can have blocks of reusable code. You can call a sub procedure whenever you need it. Ultimately, this means that there is less code in your application, which means it takes up less space on your disk and it takes up less memory. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about a type of sub program called a function. To be honest, there's not a lot of difference between a function and a sub procedure. Here's an example of a sub procedure which calculates ticket prices. Suppose, for example, we want to book tickets for the theatre or the cinema for two adults and three children. Suppose also that an adult ticket costs £20 and a child ticket costs £10. In addition, there's a £3 booking fee which is added to the total cost of the tickets. This sub procedure has two parameters the number of adults and the number of children. And I can call it like this. Two adults and three children. That's going to cost £73. If I had two adults and four children, that would cost £83. As you saw in the previous video, I can call this sub procedure from a program in a different file. But this time I need to import the file containing the procedure. I also have to prefix the name of the sub procedure that I want to call with the name of the file that contains it. £43 this time. One adult and two children. Let's continue to work with the procedure and the program that's calling it in the same file so we can see what's going on. So what about functions? Well, there's not a lot of difference between a sub procedure and a function. In fact, some Python programmers will tell you that they are one in the same. By definition, a function is a sub program which returns a value to the program that called it. I'll show you what I mean. Ticket price is now a function. That's the only change I made. Instead of the function containing a print command to do some output, it's sending back the value that it's calculated to the program that called it. But it needs to be called in a slightly different way, like this. This is the function call. I'm passing it to adults, four children. The function will do its calculation, and then the result of that calculation will be assigned to this variable, x. So now I can output x. £83. It's important to realise that this program is doing the output, not the function. The function is sending its result back to this program, so this program can do whatever it likes with that value that comes back. For example, I could do this. I can also call the function like this. The return value of the function is being fed directly to the print statement. Notice I'm using the str function to convert the ticket price into a string in order that I can concatenate it to this string here. str is one of many built-in functions. In fact, what I have here is a nested function call. There's the call to ticket price, and the result of that is being fed directly to the function str to convert it to a string. Then the return value of the str function is concatenated with my literal string, the total cost is. The resulting string is then passed into the built-in print function. Nesting function calls is a very useful programming technique, but it takes a bit of practice. 
It's easier to understand the structure and the rules of a function call when it's written like this. When this line of code runs, the variable x will contain the total cost of two adult tickets and five child tickets, plus the booking fee, of course. Why don't you give this a go yourself?